Good afternoon again. I'm Noel Campbell, and it's my pleasure to be with Steve Gaynor, who is a candidate for governor of Arizona. Welcome again, Steve, and I'm so happy that you could come up and talk with us. Uh, this is what democracy is all about, educating ourselves on the issues. And uh, I know Arizona is a big state. It's a lot of work, yeah, and you're yeah. getting around the state. Yeah. Could you, uh, we'll just start off for quickly telling me sure. about all the places you go in this state. Have you been up and down and sideways? I've been everywhere. <laughs> I've been, yeah, up the west side from Yuma all the way to Mojave right. County on the east side uh -huh. all the way down. So, yes, and and I love the state. You yeah. know, it's it's a great state. Right. It's very convenient because... It's a four hour drive right. to any corner. Exactly. So yeah, you, I've been we talked about this a little bit earlier. It has to be fun to do this job. Yes. You've got to want to enjoy the day. And that's yes. how I approach it. And tell us how you approach it. Yeah, no, I do. Uh, some of my most memorable times are out just talking to people, especially in the rural areas. Right. I love the rural parts of the state. And I meet the greatest people. Yeah, it's a beautiful state. And uh, once again, welcome to Prescott, Arizona, Northern Arizona. Thank you. So um, one of the uh, the issues that we are really a hot button issue up here, and I'm sure throughout the state, is election integrity. Yeah. What transpired in the last election? Uh, and why don't you uh, talk about your thoughts about that? Well, no, you probably remember I ran for Secretary right. of State in 2018. Uh, accident of fate. I was in the printing business. So I manufactured cashiers and checks, cashiers checks and money orders for banks. Mm -hmm. So document security was integral in what I did every single day. The idea of having one document lost was a bad thing. And I ended up consulting for the FBI and the Secret Service on check fraud. So I knew a lot about it. And, and as I got more and more into the Secretary of State's race, I realized, oh, the way these elections are handled is not the best practice that I could see. So then we had the election, Hobbs is the Secretary of State, and she's done a terrible job, just terrible. After the 2020 election, there was so much doubt about the outcome, she should have conducted an audit immediately. Right. Instead, she fought it. She fought it because it was politically good, but for the people of Arizona, it was terrible. Right. And in Arizona, in the whole country, everyone needs to have confidence in the elections. We don't have that now. We have to restore that. Where, where in the election process do you think that uh, we lost confidence or lost the ability to have an honest election? You know, there's not one place. It's what, when I was looking at it, from beginning to end, it wasn't great. We should have the ballots printed on secure paper like currency. It doesn't have to be that fancy, but it should be really hard to uh, fraudulently produce a ballot or copy a ballot. Right now, not that hard. Then, it, then it's the, the physical custody of it, mailing it back and forth. Um, if we have to mail them out, okay, but what I favor is mail out, bring in. Well, that's an interesting point, Steve, because 80% of the people who vote in Arizona vote by mail. Right. And so, uh, there is an effort afoot, too, at this present time uh, to have the courts uh, negate the ability to do mail-in ballots. Right. And so I'd like to hear your thought process on that and also on, on your solutions to uh, and make tighter the integrity of these mail-in ballots. Right. Well, it's a constitutional question. Is it constitutional to have mail-in ballots or not? The Supreme Court's going to decide that. And there's a real question there. But let's say they... They say it is constitutional. Uh, if the legislature passes a law that says we're not going to have mail-in ballots, I'll sign that law. Mm -hmm. But if we have to have mail-in ballots, have people bring them physically in. Because what that does is then you have to present an ID when you bring it. So all this concern and legitimate concern about ballot harvesting and passing mm -hmm. ballots around, if you have to bring your own ballot in and show an ID, that goes a long way to having security with ballots. What about those people who would say that it is, would be very cumbersome to, for older people to bring their ballot in? They can't get transportation or whatever reason. Sure. You hear this all the time. Yeah. Well, we have a tradition in our country. If you can't get to the polls, we make accommodation for that. And we absolutely should. Whether we send a notary to your house or wh whatever, for whatever reason, if you can't make it or you can't bring it to the to the polling place, 
fine. You make accommodation mm-hmm. for that. But in general, the, I think the practice should be you show a government ID when you bring your ballot to a polling place. And if you mail it out and bring it back, then you, you alleviate the logistics issue at the polls of everybody actually filling their ballot out there. Right. So that's, that's a way that we can have security and mm-hmm. convenience. As you know, there are many um, bills uh, being submitted in the legislature to deal with this very issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, Representative Mesnard uh, has one that would, would require uh, four forms of ID. I think it's up to four to uh, when you turn in your mail-in ballot. I've always thought that's a little too cumbersome. I I would prefer the mail-in ballot if we couldn't do what you're proposing, at least have the last four digits of the social security number. Uh, so that would go a long way of tightening up that process. That would be a lot better than just a signature. Right. Yeah, it really would. So, and then it's the issue of counting and making sure that there's no way to manipulate the count. What I've said is that Rather than hand counting, which is slow, we can use dumb machines like the Scantron machines they use in schools to count to grade test papers. They're cheap. They're easy to find. You put them, you make two rooms, one for Democrats, one for Republicans, and they both count the ballots. That way, everybody has confidence in the count. The day after, you know the results. Mm. You don't announce anything until the results are done. The count is done. And then you accomplish the most important purpose is that everyone has confidence. Everyone knows that their ballot was counted properly and they have confidence that the results are well, honest. So with all the irregularities that we had in Maricopa County and Pinal County, I mean, where do we go from here? What, what, what's your thought process about looking forward, trying to overturn the election, that kind of process? Give me your thoughts on that, please. As a candidate, my focus is on the next election. I want to make sure that this upcoming election has integrity, that it's honest. And I will say to Republicans, you need to turn out and watch at the polls. I have friends in Virginia where Glenn Youngkin won. Mm -hmm. And what I was told by the people who watched that election, the reason they had integrity in that election is because Republicans turned out en masse to watch, to man the polls. And that's a really important thing. I don't know what will happen in this legislative session. I don't know if there are going to be any changes at all in our voting procedures, but Republicans need to turn out. Right. Well, let's talk about some rule of law issues, uh, such as our courts and our judges, appointment mm-hmm. of judges, and the ability of the executive, uh, the governor, to make these appointments. And uh, what would you like to see in that process? And what's your thought process there? Appointing judges, I think, is one of the most important things that a right. governor does. Just like at the federal level, one of the most important things the president does. So in our state, we have, we have a... Uh, The the judiciary needs to be, in my opinion, composed of people who focus on the Constitution, who look to the original meaning, look to the actual text of law, and don't invent law. Mm -hmm. Don't legislate from the bench. This is what judges should do, and this is what judges need to do. They interpret the Constitution according to the way it was written and according to the actual text. So in appointing judges, that's what I would look for. People who are really accomplished in the legal profession, who have great legal minds and will follow the law. One thing as governor of the state is that you have a relationship with the legislature, the Senate and the House of Representatives. And as governor, what is your thought process about uh, your role of interacting with legislators um, all too often, we see that the governor will put down an edict or a budget and then close everything off and the legislature is left with just the choice to approve it or you know fight it. I mean, there's got to be a better way. I, I'm speaking from experience, having been down there six yeah. years. Um, how would you interact with the legislature? Well, the first thing is I would interact with the legislature. Uh, to me, the legislature are the representatives of the people. And, and so it's really important to have interaction and, and a cooperative relationship whenever you can. Uh, if Democrats dominate the legislature, that may not be so easy, but I'm confident, I'm confident <laughs> that's not going to be the case. We have good candidates. We'll have good campaigns. 
No, I think there needs to be cooperation because we have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. I want to get a lot done in our state. I want our state to become a world-class place to do business, raise a family. Uh, so we have a great start here, a great foundation, but there's a lot of work to do. And I want the cooperation of the legislature. And the other thing I would say is, you know, what we saw during COVID is, in my opinion, a lot of overreach yeah, exactly. from the executive branch. I understand that people were scared of the virus and they felt like they were protecting people. But my attitude is the, the founders of our country were brilliant. They invented a form of government where you have different branches that have different functions. And my belief is that the strength of our country is following that recipe, that, that order. So you're not going to find me making law. Okay, there's an emergency for a week or two. After that, if I think there are laws that need to be made at the legislature's not in session, I'm going to call it in session and say, folks, I think there's a need. It's your job. Do it. And, and, I, and that will be my expectation. And if I think the job's not done, I'm going to talk to the public about the fact that I don't think the job is done, but I'm not going to make the law myself. Well, you can get a lot more legislators to go along with you if you use a little bit of honey and a little <laughs> less vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> and it really it means a lot to the uh, members of the House and the Senate to know that the governor is personally interacting with them and it, uh, it stops uh, walls from being built. And uh, I would hope as governor, uh, you would reach out and reach across and visit these guys a lot because it means yeah. a lot. Yeah. No, I definitely would. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the other subjects that are very important in Arizona is our economy. Yes. And and let's talk a little bit about that. What what do you see for Arizona's future uh, in uh, how the state's going to grow and what the future holds for us? Yeah. Well, I will say during Governor Ducey's administration, we've had a tremendous amount of economic growth. That really has been I think the high point of his administration. And, and we've had a lot, of, a lot of growth. What concerns me about that is having done business in California for 40 years, I don't wanna see our quality of life in Arizona diminished greatly the way it has been in California. Mm -hmm. It's 40 years ago, California was great. Today, it's terrible, just a terrible place to live. So we have to be careful and more thoughtful about the way we develop and we have to look at our infrastructure, roads, right. internet, water, because if we don't pay attention to that, we're gonna end up with a mess. And I, you know, every, every administration has its own issues to deal with. So to me, we've lit a fire on development. Now we have to think about the consequences of that. So, uh, as you know, or probably don't know, I was chairman of transportation in the house and mm -hmm. I worked on these issues for six years. So how would you go about, I mean, we do have uh, infrastructure needs and it, and it really, it's a revenue problem. So, I mean, what is your thought process? How, how do we get the funding for this? And we could use private public partnerships, toll roads. There's a whole lot of ideas out there. Uh, but as you know, the I-17 is going to be widened from Anthem to Sunset Point. We finally got that yeah, done. Yeah. It's going to take three years, yeah. but we're going to a major artery in the state, but we have other transportation needs. So how do, how do we go about doing that? Yeah, it's there's not one single answer. I think depending upon what the project is, there are a number of alternatives. And I'll tell you one thing that I have in mind. Uh, if we got a deep water port in Mexico, there you go. in combination with I-11 coming up from right. the border, that would put Arizona not only on the map in our country, but in the whole world. Right. Because all of Asia is having a terrible time getting their goods That's into right. our country in LA. Right. We would completely overtake LA. Right. Port of Ensenada. It, it would just spur development right. all over our state. Steve, thank you so much. Uh, we're coming up at the end of our second segment, and I wanna give you this opportunity to uh, take a few minutes to talk to the people of Northern Arizona about yeah. your candidacy and yeah. how they can help you and reach out to you. Yeah. Uh, well, first I want to say thank you to Prescott E! News for giving me this opportunity and Noel for, for having being on with me. My website is gainerforgovernor.com. That's G-A-Y-N-O-R forgovernor.com. Sign up, be a volunteer, get a, a yard sign, 
uh, give me 10 bucks for my campaign. <laughs> of course. I will tell you, of the four major candidates running for governor, I'm the only one who's ever been a chief executive officer of anything. The governor, in my opinion, is chief executive officer of the state. state. You want somebody in that position who's not a trainee. I know I can walk in on day one and have impact. I don't need training wheels. I know how to make an organization accomplish mission. And that's what we need in Arizona. Steve, thank you so much for coming and visiting us here. Yeah, thank you, Noel. Have a great day. Appreciate it.